Today, I'm going to show you how to derive the kinematic equations. Uh, so first, we'll start with some definitions. So we're going to define x, the vector over top as the position. So that's where you are in space. Then we have the velocity. Which is how fast you're moving and in what direction. Because it is a vector. And acceleration. which is how fast your speed is changing. And direction of that change. And the way that these terms are related is that Velocity is defined as the rate of change of position with respect to time. And acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. And so using just these two definitions, we're going to derive the kinematic equations. So the first kinematic equation, we're going to start with this definition that acceleration equals the time derivative of velocity. Okay, so let's say we wanted to solve this equation for velocity. As a function of time. Okay, so this is what we want. To do that, we're going to take this equation. And now we want to isolate the velocity. So we're going to move the time derivative to the other side. Now we have a setup that looks like this. We can integrate it. And I'm going to be very explicit with this uh, derivation. And we're going to include bounds on our integral. So this is going to be a definite integral. OK. So one of the assumptions that we're making is that the acceleration is constant. And what that means is that it does not change with time. Or in other words, acceleration is not a function of time. Okay, so because acceleration is not a function of time, you can pull it out of the integral on the left side of the equation. You have dt integral from t initial to t final. And then on the, the right-hand side, you have velocity Okay, so doing these integrals, you get t, where you're plugging in the bounds t initial to t final, and velocity, where you're plugging in the bounds v initial to v final. So now let's just define t initial as 0. So we're going to start from time equals 0. OK, so now we have a 
t final minus t initial equals v final minus v initial. And so if we plug this in to t initial, a t f minus zero, and you just get a t f equals v final minus v initial. And now let's make another definition. Let's just say t final is t. So now you get a t equals v final minus v initial. And solving this for v final, we get v initial plus a t. Okay, so there's our first kinematic equation. And another way that we can write that is v as a function of t equals v initial plus a t. So two different ways of writing the same equation. So I showed you how to uh, do this integral with a definite integral. Um, so we had acceleration, it's defined as the time derivative of velocity with respect to time. And we moved the dt to the other side. And we wanted to integrate this and we decided to use a definite integral. So I wanted to show you how to also do this with an indefinite integral. Uh, so let's just assume that this left hand side stays the same and it goes to a t. And let's look at this dv integral from a, an indefinite point of view. Okay, so if we want to do an indefinite integral, we get v as a function of time. And then we have to add some constant c. Okay, so now our job is to find what that constant is. And to do that, we use a boundary condition. So we know at time t equals zero, our velocity had to be the initial velocity. So let's plug these two definitions into our equation above. So a times zero equals the velocity at time t equals zero plus c. So the left-hand side just goes to zero. The velocity at time t equals zero, we defined as v initial. So v initial plus c has to equal zero. So solving for c, we get negative v initial. So if we plug that back into our equation, a times t equals v as a function of t plus c. Now we get v as a function of t. So we're plugging in the negative v initial for that c. So solving for v as a function of t, we get v initial plus a t, which is the same equation that we had derived previously. But I wanted to show this example of an indefinite integral and how to use boundary conditions because this is something that's going to be very useful as you go through your physics career. Okay, so let's carry those equations over. The final, B initial plus T for V as a function of time equals V initial plus T. Okay, 
So now let's derive another equation of motion. So let's use the other derivative that we defined earlier. So we had velocity equals the time derivative of position. So we'll start with the same kind of process we did before. Let's solve for the position. So we'll move the dt to the other side. And then we want to integrate both sides. Let's do a definite integral again. This is going to go from x initial to x final. This is a, an integral with respect to time. So we're going to go from time initial to time final. This left-hand side will be easy. So you'll just plug these values x initial, x final into your position. But the right-hand side, if we want to take an integral of velocity with respect to time, uh, we have to use this definition of velocity as a function of time. So plug that in, and now you get b initial plus at as a function, uh, integrate as a function of time. Okay, so the left hand side just becomes x final minus x initial. And now this right hand side we can break into two different integrals. So we're going to have the integral of t initial to t final, b initial to t plus the integral t initial to t final a times t dt. Okay. This first integral, the initial velocity is a constant, so we can pull it out of the integral. And then the acceleration is also constant like it was in the previous example. So that can be pulled out of the integral. But t is obviously not constant with respect to time, so it has to stay in the integral. Okay. So taking the integral of t dt, and let's use the same assumption that we did before that t initial equals zero. Now this left hand side just carry over. We'll get v initial times t final, and then we're just going to replace t final with t. Okay, and now we have a times, so the integral of t dt is t squared over two. And then you're replacing that the limits t initial to t final, but we've set that zero and that's one, uh, t. So then you get x final minus x initial equals v initial t plus a t squared over 2. So if we want to solve this for x final, we get x initial plus v i t plus a t squared over 2. So there's your second kinematic equation. All right. Now for the third kinematic equation, let's carry these other ones over first. So V is a function of T, 
use. I'm going to write it the final equals the initial plus t. And then we have x final equals x initial plus the t plus eight squared over two. Okay, so we're starting with these two equations and now to get the third kinematic equation, which doesn't have a time variable in it, we need to solve one of these equations for time and then insert it into the other equation. So let's pick this first equation to solve for time since it only shows up once, it'll be much easier to solve. So V final plus V initial plus V T. Solving for T, we want to subtract the V initial to the other side and then divide by acceleration. Okay, so now we have a time that we're going to plug into our second equation. So x final equals x, x initial plus v initial times time, which we've solved for in the other equation as this plus acceleration over two times. At the same time that we solved for, and then we're gonna square that. Okay, so I'm just gonna move this x initial to the other side. And now we've got, so we're going to distribute this V initial to both terms in the first um, instance where we inserted the, the time. So we got V final, V initial over A minus V initial squared over A. Now we have a over two, and we have to FOIL this v final minus v initial over a term. So FOIL is first outside, inside last, for when you want to square something. So when we do that, we get v final squared minus two v final v initial plus v initial squared all over a squared. Okay, so we can cancel out this squared with this a in the numerator. And then we'll have three terms That will be over 2a. So we have v final squared over 2a minus, um, so the 2v final v initial, that'll also be over 2a, but the 2s will cancel. And then plus v initial squared over 2a. Okay, so now you'll see that we have a V final V initial over 2A that's negative and a V final minus V initial over A that's positive. So those guys cancel out. And now we have a minus V initial squared over A plus V initial squared 
over 2a plus b final squared over 2a. Okay, so these terms are almost the same. Uh, they just need this term to be uh, the v initial squared over a to be multiplied by 2 over 2. So this is minus 2vi squared over 2a plus v initial squared over 2a plus v final squared over 2a. Okay, so basically minus 2 plus 1 gives you v initial squared over 2a plus v final squared over 2a. Okay, so let's, and that equals x final minus x initial. Okay, so let's remember that on the next page, v initial squared over 2a negative plus v final squared over 2a equals x final minus x initial. Okay, so let's use the definition that delta x equals x final minus x initial. To rewrite this right hand side. And then both things on the left hand side have the same denominator, so we can write them together. Multiply both sides by 2a. a delta x and then solve for v final squared and you get v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x and there's your third kinematic equation okay and of course that can be rewritten as velocity as a function of time squared equals v initial squared plus 2 delta x. Okay, so let's collect all of our kinematic equations that we just derived. So the first one we derived was v final equals v initial plus 8t. x final equals x initial plus d i t plus 8t squared over 2 and then v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta All right, so those are all three of your kinematic equations. And in a future episode, we'll show how to use these equations to solve physics problems. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Peep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.